Welcome back to Kruzik Sanctuary and Final Fantasy XIV and Walker, everyone. Kruzik X here along with Arya Stormborn. Yeah, yeah. Hyacinth. Who went Hi. to... There she is. Uh, Sammy. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, Asuna Deathbringer. Who's AFK? Oh. Tenma. Hey, 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 Tenma. Baron Boop Boop. I'm here somewhere. And Minerva Weathervane. I will shoot myself in the head if you can tell me the name of that cat. Thackeray Binks. Oh, what color was it, bitch? Black. <laughs> You're wrong on both counts. Yes, right. indeed. <laughs> it was gray, and I think it's his name was Skippy. Skippy. <laughs> yes, let me get the Oreos, because I could use a snack, too. It has been a long and grueling journey so far. Anyway, let's talk about the last episode. Here you go, love. Uh. Last episode! We, uh... Knew the Loperits were hiding something. And of course, they were trying to keep us from... You know, trying to save the world like we always do. But we kind of stopped them in that. And they've come to understand that they've kind of been lacking in some ways. But... We're still leaving the evacuation as a last resort. Anyway, it is time to go home now, so let's get right down to it with the quest, Returning Home. No. As far as we know, Curly might be dead. With the... What? Not now. What were you saying, uh, Baron? Nothing, nothing. No, seriously, what... Uh-huh. With the Lopards in Orion Jade's capable hands, we needn't worry about affairs here in our absence. Knowing now the face of their earthly collaborators, there is much to discuss with Alvino and the others. Let us return to the Tower of Babel. Our battle for the Saw will soon begin in earnest, and we must be prepared. Okay, that's all well and good, but how are we getting there? I was gonna throw myself back a lot further in the front of my power if I hit my head. I was like, nah, maybe not. I'd rather not go through the window. Or maybe we just. I guess we go back this way? Oh! Exit to the Nether Gate. Huh. Did not know we could do that. Whoa! Almost there. Okay then. Gods, I can scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. But we'll have time to reflect on that later. Right now we need to head back to Camp Broken Glass and deliver a thoroughly detailed report to Lucia. I'd like very much to know how everyone is getting on here as well. They'd only just begun to treat the tempered prisoners when we left. I share your curiosity, but warning our allies of the final days is of greater importance. I speak not only of the contingent, of course. The heads of state of every nation must know what we have learned. What was that? We know not when or where in what matter the final days will begin to manifest, and you so we must see that everyone is prepared. Agreed. Though we may wish to stress the importance of discretion, lest the public be sent into a panic. Not that anyone in a position of responsibility should need to be told as such, but it bears repeating. Anyway, first things first, to Camp Broken Glass. Alright.
Good thing it's only a hop, skip, and a jump away. That's what she said. And we're back. It's good to see you all again. No worse for your lunar adventure, I hope. We've done what we can for now, and believe me, we intend to tell you all about it. But before we do, might you tell us what's become of Garlemald in our absence? We succeeded in subduing the Tempered inside the Tower of Babel. We took many alive, but combined with those who were already in our custody, the number of requiring care has grown exponentially. The incident... The inclement conditions here have made it difficult, if not impossible, to treat them all here. And so we have petitioned the aid of the Allied Nations. Some are, understandably, hesitant to proffer assistance, particularly those that were but recently subject to Imperial occupation. That said, several others have agreed to grant them refuge for, the, for treatment. With the assistance of your fellow Scions, we endeavor to see them safely transported and subsequently cured of their tempering. Will all the tempered be relocated? Not all, no. We have sufficient shelter to attend to those whose treatment has begun, and enough healers here volunteer to remain until their patients have recovered. Eulis is one such patient, though he is not yet fit to receive visitors. Truth be told, it was a miracle he and those in his company were not harmed in the chaos. If not for Alphino and Alice's timely assistance, I dare say none of them would be with us today. In light of recent developments, have the Alliance leaders come to any decisions regarding Golemald? Given the tremendous ramifications of what has happened here, it will take time to determine what must be done. In the meantime, they intend to work with the Eastern Alliance to keep a close watch over the provinces. We have other news to share. Shortly after Anima was defeated, we received reports that each and every tower has vanished. For our mercy, the process was apparently not quite as violent that you as that you experienced in Thavna. Those who are trapped within them have been rescued and are, retreat and are receiving treatment. To hasten this endeavor, the Beast Tribes have received instruction in the magics needed to cure tempering. Master Matoya is no doubt thrilled with an... Ma Master Matoya is no doubt thrilled the Mother Porxy affords her so many visitors. Yes, we are grateful for her ongoing efforts, as well as those of our comrades near and far. As for the contingent... Several of our members have been granted leave to return to their homelands after the transfer of Tempered has been completed. That's good. Lucia and I will remain, along with a small force to continue offering aid to those here in Garlemald. The Empire may be no more, but there are yet those who call these lands home. I believe that accounts for recent events here. So, whoops, I messed up. So, what of the moon in the Telophoroi? And now they know the truth. The final days. Gods, I prayed your victory would either... M I prayed your victory would mark the end of our troubles. There's still much we do not know. But the Alliance leaders must be towed. Would you be willing to contact them in our stead? Yes, of course. I will send word forthwith. We'll also release your fellow scions from their present duties, that they may, retur that they may return to Charlian. Your energies are better spent finding a means to avert the coming apocalypse. Speaking of your fellow scions, you will be happy to hear that Mistress Kryle, though still on the mend, has been moved to the Baldessian Annex and given into Tartaru's care. Thank you. I look forward to seeing them both upon our return. 
Let us be on our way, then. One last thing, if I may. After your confrontation with Zodiac, you said Xenos took his leave, and in all likelihood he has returned here to Gollumald. I have a mind to dispatch scouts to try to ascertain his whereabouts, but first wish to ask you if you believe there is merit in doing so. If they found him, they would not be they would not likely live to tell the tale. <sighs> I suppose you're right. To dispatch good soldiers in pursuit of such a beast would be to send them to their deaths. Pray, forget I entertain the notion. Oops. While on the subject of Xenos, the 10th Legion has made an official proclamation. They denounce the Crown Prince and condemn his role in the Empire's downfall. His very title has now become a source of shame among his former subjects, and its continued use serves only to hinder relations with foreign nations. For this reason, he has been declared Xenos Viator Galvis, outcast and enemy of Gollumald. Fandaniel is no more, and now his own people turn against him. It seems he's not but his it seems he's not but his bloodless to keep him company. Better that than an army to see it sated. At any rate, I will not keep you longer. I pray you safe passage back to Charlien. All right, back to the Baldessian Annex. There's a whistle. A demonic Lana. Everybody needs. I have to go. Man, it has gotten more lively in here. You got it, love? Nice. I will be right br front. In the meantime... I'll make my way back to the Bodicean Annex. <laughs> Alright, let's mend up. All right, gears repaired. Let's speak with Kryl. Welcome back, Chris. We were so terribly worried about you. Though it is plain I have caused my own fair share of worry, and for that, I apologize. Heidelin called to me that day when you entered the Tower of Babel. Her pleas were faint but desperate, and I knew at once she'd required a vessel to carry out her will. What came after feels like a dream barely remembered. My body flowing through the life stream toward Gollumald. When I regained consciousness, I was all aches and frostbite. Exhausted of ether. So exhausted, in fact, I could only laugh. For it was in that moment I understood Raha's weariness from the Tower of Zot. Would that I could laugh at a time like this. Though we prevented Zodiac from being unleashed upon the world, I am curious to know what else took place there on the moon. Ah, uh, but we should perhaps we should wait for the others to join us before you give a before you give your account. Let us reconvene in the main hall once they've arrived. All right. Uh, 
actually, you know what? Before we wait for our comrades to arrive, I'm not liking this outfit as much as I once did. So I am going to switch back to an oldie but goodie. And seeing as though I'm in a place to do it, Bam! Congratulations, Arya. Uh, Arya's not here at the moment. <laughs> well, she just won the, the, the demonic lantern. Yeah, indeed she did. Indeed. All right. Okay. Voice cut scene okay. or no? For now. Nope. All right. Everybody left. What would you prefer? Demonic, Rose, Sophia, or Wari? I think I'm the only one here these days. It does seem that way, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the cutscene. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting. Not at all. We understand you've been quite busy. Will Uriel J be joining us? Nope, he's still on the moon. Duty keeps him away, I'm afraid. Though Chris can explain why better than I. And now we explain. The final days as befell Amorot. And we are to escape via the moon? What are the source and its reflections? I've no intention of standing by while the world falls to ruin. So, how do we stop this? Unfortunately, we have no answers at present. In the celestial current, if the celestial currents have grown stagnant, as was the case in the time of Amarant, the situation would be to alter the flow of ether throughout the entirety of the star. The ancients accomplished this by summoning Zodiac, sacrificing half the star's population in the doing. But it should go without saying that such a sacrifice must not, cannot be repeated. Which leaves us with the daunting task of identifying the underlying catalyst for the final days. A feat which even the Amaratines could not accomplish. Unfortunately, we found no clues in Mare Lamentorum. There is still so there is still much we do not know about the catastrophe itself, let alone what may have caused it. The final days were marked by the corruption of the Amaratine's creation magics, but we command no such power, which invites the question, what havoc is in store for us? If we knew that much, perhaps we could draw some parallel with the events of the past and thereby form some semblance of a plan. Perhaps we should start with the form, then. Having worked with the Loperids in secret all this time, there is surely more they can tell us. Forgive the interruption, but I've urgent news! The form is holding a public assembly in the plaza outside. Some sort of announcement. What is father up to now? There's only one way to find out. Because I was rolling a cigarette when we started. And we're gonna we're gonna go a couple of times. Thirty seconds. We don't need to so you you and Hyacinth are doing so. Oh, what's going on here? What's going on here is that I just got some wonder. I'm 
Let's take a test. Whatever you were gonna say, me too. <laughs> is this a voice cut scene or no? Order, order. Yep, it is. Here we go. What fresh hell arrives for us in Charlian? I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian. I have Nay, a few more in the yard and I gotta start. go to sleep. I get you. You can always come back. Said affairs concern all citizens. And so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talofaroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come. Ushering chaos and calamity, the final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. <clears throat> the time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Here we go. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, Here we it go. will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. 
which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. Oh, here we go. For his impressive contributions and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Of course you did. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, Yay! we will brave a new frontier. A new frontier, huh? Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. remember what mother told us when we visited home that it wasn't until after we were born that father seemed to lose himself in his work if that great work of his was the evacuation of this star then yes it wasn't for his benefit mm -hmm. would you mind waiting here a moment I wish to speak with father before we leave. Keep it civil, eh? I may look daggers at him, but I will neither speak nor draw them. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with father as well. Oh. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. <laughs> then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people. Many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. 
<laughs> Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. And continuing to be the biggest prick in Charlian. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Yeah, but he's not gonna say it. Bold words call for bold action. And there'll be no turning to your father Aww. should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. <laughs> Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. Works for me. Wait, where? Oh, they already sent me halfway. tells me the form made a rather momentous announcement. So there's to be a great exodus, is there? I'm reminded of my narrow escape from the Isle of Val. The realization, the run-in, the mixture of relief and regret after. Why me, I ask myself. Why me? Why us? Why now? Why wonder? There's no use fretting over the cosmic morality or lack thereof. We're here. We'll get through this together. And who knows? Maybe my luck will rub off and grind everyone a narrow escape. There's no harm praying for as much. I want Ojika's freaking outfit right here. Or at least the top. Oh, but enough of my rambling. I'm sure you're exhausted. Your chamber awaits. A visitor has come knocking at your door. Whoever could it be? Oh. I have a choice? Oh, no. I hope I didn't wake you. Not at all, dude. I pray you will forgive the unannounced visit, but I wish to speak with you before retiring for the night. Yeah. About Garlemald and the time we spent with the people of Tertium. Dangerous though it was, I'm glad we had the opportunity to treat with Eulis and Quintus. I was worried what might happen after we were collared. If they attempted to restrain you too. If they succeeded. Once more, I put you in harm's way. 
And for that, I must apologize. Mm. Or rather, I should thank you for trusting in me time and time again. After all our journeys together, I dare say I've used every expression imaginable to convey to you my gratitude. Nevertheless, I hope these words of mine still carry some small weight. Tomorrow, our fight continues. Mayhap it would have been better to seek you out after we have true cause for celebration. <laughs> but having mustered the courage to stand up to Father and achieve a personal victory of sorts, I wanted to carry on in that spirit before my nerves got the better of me. The hour grows late, and you doubtless tire of my ramblings. I have a letter for Orenvold to finish, but we'll be off to bed shortly. Sleep well. <laughs> hmm. But now it... But now it compels me a short while earlier in the Alamegan Quarter. Oh dear. Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. Yeah. But is it true they brought back tempered Galleon soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, they've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Mm -hmm. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. They're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. What the? Okay, meanwhile in Ishgard. Another day, another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? that? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone, and the Garlean threat is abated. And yet, why does it feel as though it's about to get much, much worse? <laughs> Yep. Mm. 
Wait, what's going on in... I don't like the looks of this, and we just unlocked the achievement higher, um, which I guess me. All right, let me unmute the uh, live the. Uh, so, uh, so Hyacinth left. Now. Yes, she so had to go to bed. Yeah. We are down to four now, and. Um, all right, so Asuna is literally here just wasting his time helping us like a good man. Mm. Um, we still have the demonic and the Sophia and the boring planet. Uh, Nerva and Arya need Sophia, uh, boring, and me and Nerva need the demonic. So, let's do Sophiac. We'll do T6 again, I guess. And I think we might be able to just keep doing T6 until, well, it, it's basically T6 and uh, seven, I think. Well, while you guys are doing that, shit has officially hit the fan in this storyline, so we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with more. If you're watching on Twitch, stay tuned, and yeah. if you're watching on YouTube, here are all the links you need. Seven and nine. 